Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're confused with the types of short crust that exist in French cooking, well, let me tell you, you are not alone. I think in France, we're all confused. There are so many types of short crust, it's not funny. When I look, you know, in English speaking countries, you got like the savory short crust and like the sweet one. In France, we've got four types and they're all used for different things. So in this video, I thought I'm gonna give you an explanation once and for all about what they are, how to use them, and what kind of ingredients you can find in them with some advantages and inconvenience, okay? So let's sit down and let's talk about this. And here we are. So this video is gonna be just informational and I'm gonna be very high level. We're not gonna go into detail with demonstration. I'm not gonna give you a list of specific ingredients. All what I want is for you to understand the differences uh, there is between each type of short crust, okay, with their name and what are they used for. We're gonna discuss also about some of the predominant ingredients you find into it, but the big idea is just to understand, okay, which one to use for what. That's about it. So let's start with the uh, contestant number one, which is the easiest of all short crust. It is called the pâte brisée. Let's go. So here we are, the pâte brisée. Uh, the translation of the pâte brisée is a bit odd because it, it will almost, you know, translate as like the crunched and the smashed uh, kind of, uh, of dough, but it doesn't really make uh, any sense. But what makes sense is that this is the one you need to use for savory preparation. So when you talk about a short crust for a quiche or a savory tart in France, then you have to use a pâte brisée. It is very straightforward to make. The ingredients are, you know, they're really kept to a minimum and it is just mainly flour, butter, salt and water. There's no eggs, there's no sugar. And what I love about this one, and what a lot of people like, is because it is you know, very easy to make, easy to roll, and easy to handle. That means that once it's rolled, you can flip it, you can put it in a tartine, it doesn't break, it doesn't fall apart, that sort of thing. So it is really, really convenient and a good all-round types of dough to use for all of your savory preparation, and this is called the pâte brisée. Let's go to the next. Number two is the pâte à foncer. Foncer means to line up the tartine uh, with the dough. And this is the classic all round sweet short crust uh, you would have usually uh, in English speaking countries or outside of France. It is almost the exact same recipe as the pâte brisée, except that instead of the salt, you add a little bit of sugar and you have some eggs into it that gives you a, a kind of a richer and softer texture. So why do we have this one here, because you will know there's more than one sweet types of short crust. Well, this one, the pâte à foncer, keep this in mind, is the one you have to use when you make a tart with toppings uh, or fruit or anything, anything that can be cooked in the oven. So an example here is the apple tart or an apricot tart. So you're making your tart and you're going to lay it out. It's going to have some filling, maybe some almond cream like we did, and you're going to fill with apricot or any fruit that can be cooked. This is the type you're going to be using. Usually you don't blind bake this type of pastry dough. The pâte à foncer is, you know, is rolled, is used like this. You make your tart, you cook it, and boom, you're done. It is reserved for sweet preparation. Now let's discover another type of sweet short because this is where things get a little bit more confusing with our number three. And now for the confusing part, we have our number three called the pâte sucrée that translates as the sweet short crust. <laughs> Imagine how clear as mud, as they say. So I just talked about that the pâte à foncer is a sweet short crust, but this one is also called a sweet short crust. So why, you know, what is the difference? So let's have a look. La pâte sucrée. This dough is typically blind baked. What does that mean? It means that, in fact, a pâte sucrée is always made with uh, the thing in mind that to create a tart shell. So it's not something that you, you know, you line the dough, you put ingredients and you cook. It's like you cook the shell on its own, so you blind bake, and then you fill the shell with a topping that can't be cooked in the oven. So if you make a strawberry tart, for instance, you're going to have to have a shell that is already cooked, and you're going to fill the shell with pastry cream and with strawberries because they can't be put in the oven, okay? The same applies for any, uh, you know, cold, or warm fillings. Uh, when you think of a, you know, a lemon curd, for instance, you can have something like this is almost you know, kind of warmish and pour it in and let it cool down in the fridge to set. And this is the use of the pâte sucrée. The ingredients also are very different. So this has got lots of sugar, okay? Lots of butter, eggs, and also most of the time some almond meal. 
Uh, it is very sticky and difficult to work with. What that, that means is that once it is done, you put it on your bench, if you try to roll it, it's going to stick to the bench. Usually you have to put this into two layers of plastic wrap. You need to let it cool all the time. And it starts to be very difficult to handle. But when you make tar shell, it's very handy. And now let's look at the final one, the number four. And to finish, the number four is the pat sablé. That means uh, the sandy short cross because sanding is the techniques used to make the short cross. I use all the dry ingredients with the butter that you rub in your hands. So you have a very sandy mixture and then add the liquids to make the dough. Now sablé in France means also biscuit. Uh, the sablé breton, I think it's called the butter biscuit or butter cookie picture on the screen, is actually made with this type of short cross. This one is very interesting because you can uh, use it to make biscuits or a cake, like we did with the gâteau basque, or you can make a cake base, like for cheesecake, this very kind of biscuity, crunchy base. So you cook the base first, like the pâte sucrée, and then you're gonna put a cold preparation that needs to be set in the fridge uh, over, okay? So it is almost the same as the pâte sucrée in terms of ingredients as well. There's more butter, there's more sugar, and it can also be flavored sometimes with almond meal, but it's not always the case. In terms of difficulty, it is the most fiddly of all. It is not hard to make, but it's very hard to handle, very hard to roll, uh, and sometimes a nightmare to cook. Uh, just as an example, if you make biscuit with that short crust, you need a cookie cutter, and when you actually cut uh, a circle of dough in there for your biscuit, you cannot remove the cookie cutter. You have to leave the cookie cutter on and cook it like that in the oven, otherwise, it just falls apart. So just to tell you uh, how fiddly that thing can be. But that's it. And this is the four types of short crust that exist in French cooking. And now let's have a very quick uh, recap so you can get your hand around all this. So as you can see, this is a lot of information and these are the types of thing I'm teaching in my online courses. And so we get something on baking and dessert, we get something with the uh, you know, French cooking for beginners that contains all kinds of information. So let's have a look at these uh, four types of short crust as a quick recap. Number one, of course, was the pâte brisée, the easiest of all, used for savory preparation and for things like quiche. And it doesn't need to be blind baked. Very easy to make, very easy to handle. And so is the second one which is the pâte foncée, which is almost exactly the same, okay, without the salt, it's got sugar into it, and it's got eggs, and also no need for blind baking. And you're gonna be using this for sweet preparation, sweet tarts that have a topping that can be cooked in the oven. So keep in your mind, apple tart, uh, apricot tart, anything like this. Most of the people stick to these two because they're easy to, to use and you can use for sweet and savory stuff. Now, if you are more of a baker, then the pâte sucrée is where you're gonna go to. The pâte sucrée, keep in mind, it's a tart shell, most of the time, okay? So you make the dough, when it's ready, you line uh, the tin and you blind bake it to make tartlets, to make big tarts, and then you add a filling that's gonna be hot or cold, and perhaps fruit or anything that cannot be cooked in the oven. Okay, so anything that's warm and needs to set in the fridge, you're gonna use this. Anything like strawberry, raspberry tart, you're gonna use this. This is the pâte sucrée. The number four is the pâte sablé, used to make biscuit, butter biscuit, also used to make a cake base that is very crunchy. Think about a cheesecake, a chocolate ganache, or anything like this. And I've seen some chefs that are actually now inventing new types of strawberry tart with a layer of uh, you know, just whipped cream, uh, sometimes with mascarpone, and then they add some fruits on top and all kinds of things with that kind of new biscuit base instead of the standard short crust. It's, it's all about inventing new things. But that's it. As you can see, it is not all that difficult, but it pays really to understand and know all the differences. So now hopefully next time when you're up to make a tart, being savory or sweet, you're gonna know which short crust to use. And here we are, so as you can see, it is not all that complex, uh, but I think it is always good to know and go back to the basics to have the definition, because when you want to make a cake or a savory preparation, it is good to know which type of short crust to use. And to be honest, now when you're gonna look at a magazine, a website, or any YouTube channel that is a bit French, and they're gonna say, oh, you have to use a pâte brisée, or you know, a pâte sablée, or anything like this, you're gonna be, ah, 
Yeah, I know exactly what that is, you see? And it's all these different nuggets of knowledge that makes you a better baker or a better cook. But that's it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, use the comment section. You won't be sharing any picture this time <laughs> in that video. But I'm keen on hearing what you think about all this short crust idea because it can be a bit confusing. As for me, I'll see you next time for another French cooking or French baking video next week. Take care all. Bye-bye. Thank you.